Well, welcome to the White House. I know that you've just come from a briefing in the old executive office building with my new chief of staff, and so you've seen firsthand the asset that Howard is to us. And uh, so you've been going to school already this morning. I don't know that there's anything left for me to say, but as always, I am glad to see old friends, and in particular, your chairman, Ambassador Gerald Carmen, who served me ably both in Geneva and at the General Services Administration. I would also like to extend an especially warm welcome to a fellow here named Jack Hume. I understand you've dedicated this luncheon to him in recognition of his hard work and loyalty to our philosophy, the nation, and CFA. Jack, America needs more men like you. I remember Jack. I remember Jack discussing the idea of CFA back in August of 1983. It was his idea. And as they say in the ads, you've come a long way, baby. <laughs> how proud you must all feel to know how far your organization has grown in that short time with 5,000 volunteers organized in over three quarters of the nation's congressional districts. And if I know Jack and Jerry, we ain't seen nothing yet. You at Citizens for America have been loyal allies. I'll always be grateful for your support with many of our critical legislative initiatives. I just told the people at my table here today, the thing you have to remember is you don't need to make Congress see the light, just make them feel the heat. <laughs> and, uh, we were in the trenches together in the fight for aid to the Contras, in the continuing battle of SDI funding, and in the struggle for tax reform. And I know you're not resting. I recently saw the new CFA ad on television and commend you on your continued diligence in making the American people aware that some Democrats still want to raise taxes. They are still the advocates of tax and spend. But we are, here in Washington, all in your debt. We know that we can count on you in the future as a press, as we press forward with our agenda for America. And you can be sure that Citizens for America has our support. I do thank you all. Now, I know that we have another little ceremony that's going to take place. And, uh, oh, I was going to say, why didn't somebody ask me a question here? But all right, I will take one. But it's almost time for me to move into the other room. President of Rockford Hero, uh, in campaign 1980, one of, your, one of your goals was to have slow, steady mice supply growth. Do what? Slow, steady mice supply growth. Uh, <laughs> Think about it. Don't that. <laughs> no. um, well, uh, you know, the, the truth is, of the ethnic jokes remaining to me, one of the ones that I can always tell is about economists, because my, <laughs> my degree was in economics. And uh, I define economists as people who wonder whether something that works in practice will work in theory. Uh, <laughs> No, I am, uh, believe me, that is, that is going to be a factor in anything that we do because I do think that the recovery, the expansion that we've had for more than 50 months now, the longest since World War II, and maybe for a long time before that, I think is due in large part to a tax cut that was a part of our economic policy. And I've said this in the presence of some businessmen who have started shaking their heads. Yes, back when I was getting a degree in economics, it was classic economic theory that the things we used to call hard times that came periodically, now we call them recessions. But uh, when those hard times came, it was solid economic theory that every time it was when the government went beyond a certain magical point in the share that it was taking from the private sector 
for its purposes. Well, I still believe that. And I think we have been taking too much. And if anything, I want to continue going the, the other way rather than sitting back and listening. It seems to me it's very simple. Starting in 1965 to 1980, in 15 years, those were the years when President Johnson's great program, social program for taking care of America, his war on poverty, uh, was put into effect. Incidentally, poverty won that war. But, uh, <laughs> but in those 15 years, the budgets increased to almost five times what they were 1980 in 1985. And the deficit increased to 38 times what it was in 1965. And I, this attempt that they make to foist the deficits off on us now, the truth is deficit spending has been structurally built in to government. And we have to make structural changes. I tell you, when Elizabeth Dole walked in with that great big check she'd had made for a billion and a half dollars and handed to me for our sale of uh, the railroad, I thought that was right. Because uh, maybe there's some others in the room as old as I am that can remember back in World War I when the government took over running the railroads. It was the biggest travel disaster the nation has ever faced. And I don't know why we thought we could do it again. And uh, we're working on the other one now. See if that can. But we're not going to retreat from those. And those are the things that in these last two years, we're desperate to see if we cannot clinch them and get them as so well entrenched that they can't just disappear uh, later. And now I know I have more than used up the time because the other little thing that's possible, I had to come in here and other than my own table, I couldn't greet all of you and old friends that I, I'm so pleased to see. But they tell me that if I go down here into the blue room and stand in front of the fireplace, you'll all come by and uh, I can have a chance to say hello to each one of you. So I'm going to do that. I shouldn't have made the first speech. I should have just taken questions. Well, thank you all.